So this is second vid now. So it's saying just it was just reminding you that normal distribution can't be equal to a set value. It's zero. But then if it isn't equal to that, then it makes sense that the error is one. The probability is one. So for this, that's a zero and that's a one. Now the continuous nature of it. We used to have these things called continuity errors. And you would actually, there was like a formula you used, but we don't bother doing that because we've got our calculators. So these are the same, but if it's greater than or equal to 51, it is greater than 51 because of the continuous nature of it. So we would just set the lower as 51 and the upper as 10,000. And it gives us roughly 0 0.342. So that's all that's trying to say. Right. So let's have a look at this one then. So, oh, I don't think I've got this, is that? There, here we go. Right, so it says the point of inflection we know is where it changes from concave to convex or vice versa. We locate it by differentiating it twice and setting it equal to zero. Now this is the proper equation that works out the normal distribution. There's quite a lot of work in this. So it says the points of inflection are in the, somewhere in the circled region. So remember that's the bit where you're leaning back the most or leaning forward the most. So it's in there somewhere. Now then, whew, this, is, this is getting a little bit messy. If I change or if I set mu to be zero, so that mu there is zero and sigma to be one. My f of x becomes one over root two pi, which is just a number, e to the minus. Now, the sigma is one, my mu is zero, minus x squared over two. So that's the equation. Now, I want to find the point, the point of inflection, so I need to differentiate it twice. So f dash to x, so the 1 over root 2 pi is just a constant. If I differentiate e to the minus x squared over 2, the minus x squared over 2 becomes a minus 2x over 2, which is a minus x. And then it's e to the minus x squared over 2. So that's differentiated it. If I tidy it up a little bit, it's minus x over root 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2. Right, now then, I want to differentiate it again, but I need to use the product rule. Now, you've got to remember with this that the root 2 pi is just a number. Right then, so do you remember my way of doing this then? So it's the, the first bit. times by the second bit differentiated, which we said was minus x e to the minus x squared over 2, plus the second bit times by the first bit differentiated. So the minus and the root 2 pi are all constants. The x differentiates is just minus 1 over root 2 pi. So let's have a look what f double dashed of x is. So it's going to be x squared e to the minus x squared over 2, but multiplied by that constant, 1 over root 2 pi, and then a minus 1 over root 2 pi, e to the minus x squared over 2. Have I made any errors there? No, I haven't. Right, now that we've got to solve it, so we need to factorise it, just being very, very careful at the time. The 1 over root 2 can come out as a factor. Pi. And the e to the minus x, uh, x squared over 2 can come out as a factor. There. So I've done that. I'm just going to stop it and restart it. The joys of the five-minute video. Right. Bye-bye.